Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Barashem, El Shab, Barashem, Al Rakak, Dash, double honors unto your apostles and elders of great most on the rule well. And Shalom to the whole four elect. This is Paya Allah. This is news and prophecy, prophecy and news update. The date today is the 17th of December. Oh, sorry, I believe it's the 18th, 18th, 19th, 20, 21. Yeah, I believe it's the 18th. No, 17th. I'll get it correct when I when I upload it. All right. And um I believe it's just turned the eighteenth actually. And um yeah, I got a few articles keeping keeping it up, you know, just updating you in prophetic events happening across the world, around the globe, and really showing you that we're in that time and we're steadily approaching the end times, all right? Three key, three key prophecies that are to play out in these last days. That of um, the rolling out of the MOTB, all right, that C-hip, the rice grain, and then um, um, World War Three, which will follow it um, quickly. And then ultimately the Lord's return, all right, with what the what the so-called white man calls UFOs, all right, which is known as the chariots of Israel, all right. Um, so I've got a couple articles I'm going to go through, and I'm Lord willing you'll be edified. So the first one I've got, this is from forces.net, and the headline reads, US and British warships shoot down 15 attack drones in Red Sea. USS Carney, a US Burke class guided missile destroyer, had been tasked with shooting down 14 unmanned aerial systems in the Red Sea. A wave of drones that both the UK and US Defence Departments believe were loot were launched by the Houthi controlled areas of Yemen, attacked in the early hours of Saturday morning. The incident also saw the Royal Navy called to action. HMS Diamond used a singular Sea Viper missile to shoot down one of the drone suspect one of the drones suspected of targeting merchant <laughs> merchant shipping in the Red Sea. This was the first time since the nineteen ninety since ni- the nineteen ninety one Gulf War that the Royal Navy have been tasked with shooting down a threatening aerial target. There have been no reports of damage to ships in the area or reported injuries to personnel. This is not the first time the US uh, warship USS Kearney um, has been forced to act. Just last month, she shot down at least three Houthi drones headed in the ship's direction in the Southern Red Sea. News of the most recent attacks came just after the U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd J. Austin announced that aircraft carrier USS Gerald R. Ford would be extended um, its deployment in the Mediterranean amid rising tensions in the Middle East. As it stands, there are currently 19... This is crazy grammar. As it stands, there are currently... 19 there is currently or there's currently 19 u.s warships in the region seven in the eastern mediterranean and 12 more stretched down the red sea across the arabian sea and up the persian gulf all right so what this is showing you with the recent tension um over in that region all right this is just continuing to show you that you know, what the Lord spoke of about wars and rumours of wars. There's many battlefronts which ultimately are culminating, are, are going to culminate to World War Three. All right. So let's get some scriptures to prove that point. So let me read this first one. Uh, this is Revelations 11 or 14, which reads, The second woe is past, and the third, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. 
All right. So the second world, uh, when you go to the the same book, Revelations eight and thirteen, it's prophesied um, that there will be three wars. All right. Now, the first war and the second war is passed, as it says. And behold, it says the third world cometh quickly. All right. The third, the second world took place when? When did the second world take place? Took place in between nineteen from nineteen thirty nine to nineteen forty five. All right, that's almost closer to a hundred years than anything. All right, but in the in the eyes of the heavenly Father, all right, that's quick. And why why is that quick? Because one day down up there is a thousand years down here. All right, so this is something that's coming incredibly quickly. That's why it says that, that's why Habakkuk it says, "Though it tarry, wait for it, for it shall surely not tarry; it shall come to pass." All right, so let's build upon that with the book of Matthew 24. A scripture I can't read enough in this time. All right, this is Matthew 24. I'll start from verse 4. And Yahweh shall answer and said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am a Mashiach, and shall deceive many. And ye shall have wars and rumours of wars. See that ye be not troubled. All right, so this is the time that we're in. We're hearing of wars and rumours of wars. What is this? This is mentioning that you have the British um, Navy being deployed and being active for the first time since the Gulf War. All right? Oh, nearly 30 years ago. Or over 30 years ago, should I say. All right? So that inactivity is, and that's around the same time as well where uh, the Soviet Union fell, all right? So this is around the time now where the Soviet, not the Soviet Union, excuse me, Russia, all right, a key um, antagonist to um, Esau's world of being a, a protagonist is, is back in power, all right, and siding with the opposition that they're actually fighting against. So this is showing you that the Heavenly Father is moving the pieces on the chessboard, all right? And, um, yeah, they're being brought to activity. So this really shows you that the, the, the Lord, the Heavenly Father, is, is stirring up the hosts, all right, mustering them for the battle. So I'll read it again, verse 6, all right? And ye shall have wars and rumours of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, all right? For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, all right? And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of the sorrows. So let me finish on this scripture in the book of Joel. Joel 3, 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and in a time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, I will also gather all nations and bring them down and will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat. All right. And this is only what's happening. This is why I wanted to read this scripture because the skirmishes and the, the battlefronts that are key, the key points where they're playing out right now is where? In a me Middle Eastern region, which ultimately, this is speaking of the Levant, all right, that, that area south of our landmass around, right, around um, Arabia, where the Heavenly Father's gathering up all these different nations to basically execute what is known as um, Yahweh Shapat, all right, the judgment of the Heavenly Father in the valley. Um, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. All right. So let's move on. So next article I want to get is this one. So this is from news.yahoo.com. And the headline reads, Russia loads new intercontinental ballistic missile into silo south of Moscow. All right. So it's, it's going, it's 
steady on the beating of the war drum showing you that this is something that isn't letting up and it's only snowballing and perpetuating into a situation that's going to bring America head to head with Russia and either side's um, proxies also going to engage as well. So it reads, Russian rocket forces have loaded a New Year, New Year's interca- intercontinental ballistic missile into a silo at a Koz- Kozlesk base in Kaluga region, southwest of Moscow. And the Defence Ministry said the 23-metre-long RS-24 Yars missile is designed to carry multiple independently uh, targetable re-entry missiles, MIRVSs, around which allow the missile to deliver multiple nuclear warheads at different targets. Man, that sounds crazy. In the Kozelsky compound, Strategic Missile Forces loaded a Yars intercontinental ballistic missile into a silo launcher. The Defence Ministry said, the Defence Ministry released a clip of the giant missile being transported to a silo and loaded into a shaft. It accompanied the video with the pounding rock music. Russia has the world's largest arsenal of nuclear weapons closely followed by the United States. All right? It's a, and that's a big problem. Um, and, and mind you, what they always fail to mention is they have hypersonic missiles, a technology which hasn't been... You no, know, the Heavenly Father hasn't given them the spirit to have that that weapon, man. All right, and that's why... The, the, the easiest way to um, understand why that is is because Russia is slated to destroy America. All right? Or America is slated to be destroyed by uh, Russia. And for them to have that ability, the Heavenly Father would have to bless them with the right tools. All right? But it just shows you that everything about Russia right now is they're, they're, the, they're the alphas in, of the pack. All right? When it comes down to Esau. And and the American Edomite isn't too happy with it. but And that's why he's making attempts through guile and mischievousness, you know, policy and um, propaganda and different means to try and establish himself as the dead honcho, all right? So I'll read again. Russia has the world's largest arsenal of nuclear weapons closely followed by the United States together. Slovakia, followed by the United States. Together, Russia and the United States control more than 90% of the world's nuclear weapons. That's crazy, man. So the rest is controlled by 10% of the nation, the world, by these two dominating forces. Russia has about 5,889 nuclear warheads, while the United States has about 5,244, according to the Federation of American Scientists. Of those, Russia and the American and the United States each have about 1,670 strategic nuclear warheads deployed. All right? So, this is, um, you know, let's read some scriptures. All right? Um, So it's the book of Isaiah. Uh, 54 and 16, which reads, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waste to destroy. All right, so basically the Heavenly Father has created these we- this weaponry. As I mentioned before, that Russia has the better of the two, right? When it comes to, um, you know, the the set of um, miss, missiles and the, the share amount, all right? But it says, I'll read again, Behold, I have created the smith that blew the coals in the fire. That's talking about the scientists that split the atom, right? Only with um, Oppenheimer, 
all right? And that bring it forth an inst- instrument for his work. And I have created the ways to destroy, all right? Being a nuclear missiles that's being created to destroy, all right? Now, you see that this movement is being made, and this really just speaks volumes in terms of what? In terms of this, all right? This prophecy coming to pass. Because you have to understand how close this destruction is. Revelation 7 and 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, all right, north, east, south, west, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. All right, that's dealing with the destruction. They're holding it back. All right. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having a seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. All right. So you have the destruction. You have four angels presently right now at this moment, pulling back, fighting with ferocity. All right. <laughs> with, with great strength, they're pulling back the destruction and withholding it from happening. All right, that's why you see these spirits, you know, where people feel like they want to push that. You know, you've heard about different things happening, you know, close calls with like um, um, nuclear weapons almost being um, sent to America, wherever have you, however the stories go. But that's because, why has it happened? Because these angels are pulling back the destruction, all right? So I read again verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. And that's only why this nothing's happened, because of the word having to go forth before the destruction unfolded to seal the heavenly father's elect. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. All right. So I was going to read one more scripture. Oh, Psalms 91. Nice. I know it's very one. Oh, I'll put E on No, that's what I was gonna read. Salakia, Salakia. Read this. Um. I'll just read this actually. I was going to read Revelations, but I'll read this. Dealing with the sword. Right, Isaiah 34 and 5 and 6. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Right, and that's talking about the intercontinental ballistic missiles. Look, it even says it here. That's the spirit actually. I'll read it from the article again. The 23 meter long RS 24 uh, yards. A uh, missile is designed to carry multiple independently uh, targetable re-entry, re-entry vehicles, all right, which allow the missiles to deliver multiple nuclear words at different targets. All right, so that's it being bathed in heaven because they basically go out of the atmosphere and then come back in. So it bathes for a moment and comes back down upon the target. All right, but you also have diff- you have different forms of different trajectories, all right. But this in this occasion speaking of, you know, it being bathed in heaven, going up and down, all right. The Lord is poetic, man. All right, so it says, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea, and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord Yahweh is filled with blood, is made fat with fatness. 
with the blood of lambs and goats and the fat of kidneys and rams for the Lord Yahweh have a sacrifice in Bozra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. All right. Um, so that's that. So I'm gonna I may read two articles because I kind of. So I read a bit of this and I progress into the other one. All right, because this really shows you, this is quite telling of, um, it's very telling of the <laughs> the savagery of, you know, of of um, these um, J-double-O's, man. All right, so this is um, com. The headline reads, Free Hostages Mistakenly Killed by IDF fire, screamed help, held white flag. So, this is the situation that's still going on between, you know, the state of uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians, all right, over in our land, all right. This really just shows you what kind of, <laughs> you know, human rights violations and. I can't speak to actually whether it's a human right violation, but it, it definitely speaks to just a mor- moral standpoint of the fact that someone was at the window screaming help and held a white flag and, and you shot them dead like a dog in the street. All right, someone could say, yeah, they were trying to, you know, there was any chance they could try and sabotage us. But it's, it's even worse when you find out they own civilians. All right, that speaks volumes. And not only... Not any civilians. We're talking the civilians that really were used as a um, as a, the the um, the what's the word I'm looking for? The lint. I don't use the word linchpin, but I think that's appropriate. But more like the poster. You know, they're, they're like the poster boys. You know, the the face of. The reason why they're actually doing these, um, this 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 um, ground, uh, making these moves, all right. So you'd think they would know what they look like, all right, and not actually be taking out these hostages. Fucking crazy. So I read a little bit and then progress into my other article. So um, it says the IDF soldiers who mistakenly killed three Israeli hostages in Gaza on Friday violated the rules of engagement. IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General uh, Herzi Halevi announced on Saturday night the soldiers shot the hostages even though they screamed help in Hebrew. Oh, damn. That's crazy. Were bare from the waist up. Damn. And held up a white flag. That's fucking crazy. Halevi uh, said... That at the stage of the idea, at this stage, the IDF was treating it as a tragic error and violation under very difficult circumstances, without con- a condemnation. Hey man, that's easy, man. But there could still theoretically be a criminal process at some later date, led by the IDF legal division. Typically, in a case like this, the division waits to probe the issue until. It receives the full and final command investigation. But there have been cases where initial evidence is strong enough to launch an initial criminal probe, and there the soldiers involved were immediately arrested and questioned under under caution, which was not yet been done. Alright, so these three individuals was was shot dead. Alright. So let me move into this other article. Um so this is from msn.com. The headline reads, Netanyahu under pressure over hostage. Oh, slow. that's not what I wanted. I wanted uh, this. This is from um, apnews.com. The headline reads, Black American solidarity with Palestinians is rising and testing long-standing ties with J- to Jewish allies. Um, Sydney Wallace, a black Jewish community activist, never felt compelled to travel to Israel, though next year in Jerusalem was a constant refrain at a Chicago synagogue. 
The 39-year-old said she had plenty of focus. She had plenty to focus on at home, where she frequently gives talks on addressing anti-black sen- uh, anti-black sentiment in the American Jewish community and dismantling white supremacy in the U.S. I know what I'm fighting here, she said. Um, that will change when she visited Israel and the West Bank at the invitation of a Palestinian-American community organizer from Chicago Southside, along with two dozen other black Americans and Muslim, Jewish and Christian faith leaders. The trip, which began September 26th, enhanced Wallace, Wallace's understanding of the struggles of the Palestinians living in the West Bank under Israeli military occupation. But horrifyingly, it was cut short by the unprecedented October 7th attacks on Israel by Hamas militants. In Israel's ensuing bombardment of the Gaza Strip, shocking images of destruction and death seen around the world had mobilised activists in the US and elsewhere. Wallace and a growing number of black Americans see this Palestinian struggle in the West Bank and Gaza reflected in their own fight for racial equality and civil rights. The recent rise of protests, see this is even crazy because it's it's the fact that she has so much history in dealing with white supremacy and um, a hateful sentiment from the so-called um, JOOs toward Jake, you know, gives her enough of a, a background, enough of a feel to really be able to when presented with the Palestinian, the West Bank struggle, to actually see it and be, you know, able to really understand, have more of an understanding and a form of um, sentiment, you know, uh, being drawn towards it. So it says, um, the recent rise of of protest movements against the police, against police brutality in the US, where st- structural racism plagues nearly every facet. Uh, racist, racism plagues every facet of life has connected black and Palestinian activists under common cause. All right? So, uh, but the kinship sometimes strains the more than century-long alliance between black and Jewish a- activists from black American groups that denounced the US backing of Israel's occupation of Palestinian territory to black black protesters demonstrating for the Palestinians' right to self-determination. Some Jewish Americans are concerned that support could escalate the the threat of anti-Semitism and weaken Jewish black ties fortified during the civil rights movement. Right, oh, um, so this is it's funny because I didn't even read it for that, but I mean, you could read more for the for the interest of time. I'm, I don't want to really delve too deep into it, but you can definitely read more into it because I see there's a lot to it. But, um, yeah, the reason why I initially read it was really because you know, Jake, Jake had. Mainly because Jake are taking an interest in something that has no bother of them, and it really shows you that they, you know, they're a friend for everyone, but no one's a friend for them. But ultimately, what it's showing is that this is gonna be, you know, this is by extension gonna be a means to an end for the so-called J double O. And why is that? Because now they can say that this alliance, these alliances, they're basically ganging up to perpetuate what anti-semitism all right when funnily enough the arabs are semitic shemitic should i say because that's the true that's where sem comes from comes from shem one of the sons of um noah all right the arabs are shemitic and the so-called blacks negroes they're shemitic as well all right so there's no way they could be anti-semitic all right but um, yeah, they're taking an interest in something that has none nothing to do with them. All right, this isn't none of the none of their business, right? A bit there is funny enough because 
in the kingdom, it, it's going to be a, a gross awakening for them when they finally realize where, where, where their place it is in the whole scenario. All right? So let me read this, this very well-known scripture. All right? I think it's uh, one. No, it's Jeremiah. Yeah. See, there you go. Says Isaiah 1 and 3. The ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. All right, that's what's going on right now with Israel. The tribes, all right, they are not aware of who they are, all right, when it comes to their, sta their standing upon this earth. Right, and if they, if, if they really understood, they wouldn't entangle themselves in this situation, right? Because you see a lot of them having some kind of two cents to throw in and feeling like they need to participate, when in reality it's none of their business, all right? And I'll show you that through this prophecy. It's the book of Revelations 11 and 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of the Most High, and the altar and them that worship therein. All right? Now, this being the point, and that obviously believe, belongs to the children of Israel. All right? Verse 2, but this being the point. But the court which is without the temple, leave out. So that's the court that's outside of the temple, you got to leave that out. All right? And measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And this being the point, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. And that's presently what's going on right now. All right, they're at, they're treading that landmass. All right, it's it's been split up into multiple uh, fractions, and all the you know they're all fighting over it. Okay, but it's due to prophecy within the Bible. And that's why really, in, all in all, you don't have no part to play in it. Your part to play is to do the will of the Heavenly Father, which ultimately they are doing, being asleep, being, you know, um, likely two-thirds unto the Heavenly Father. But truly, you're meant to be what worshipping the Heavenly Father in righteousness and in truth. All right, so let me finish with this scripture. What was I going to read? Oh, crib. Two and ten. Let's remember this two and ten. Uh, Michael two and ten. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, and it, um, and it, sh because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. Right. So, arise and depart, for this is not your rest. In America is not your rest. All right. You have a lot of our people that have been. Americanized, just like they were Hellenized, right? And uh, more Romanized even during the time of the Greco Roman Empire. But we're in that same empire all over again, and now you've been Americanized, all right? But you're to arise and depart because that's why you're participating in protests and things of that nature because you feel like you have a place within the society and you're participating in the means for, for justice, all right, in accordance with this man's system, when really it's not for you. You have to arise and depart. You have to get your take your mind to, to a higher level and to salvation. So anyway, with that, man, that's um, the update. I pray you're edified to the next one. Say shalom, shalom, shalom.